do you think there's been overheated rhetoric on your side at all? Not that I've seen. I don't see the violence in our protests. I just came through a protest group and we don't protest like that. We protest peacefully okay. and that's what we did on January 6th except January for- January 6th was a peaceful protest? Except for some. Hi, I'm Zach Weissmuller for Reason here at the 2024 Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. The GOP has toned down its rhetoric about the deep state and vengeance against the Biden regime for this convention. With Trump at a commanding polling lead following a near assassination, the theme is unity. Just like our ancestors, we must now come together, rise above past differences. Any disagreements have to be put aside and go forward united as one people, one nation, pledging allegiance to one great, beautiful, I think it's so beautiful, American flag. Trump supporters we spoke to here weren't particularly heated, and many genuinely seemed to want both sides to tone down their rhetoric after the attempt on Trump's life. I'm hoping that some of the things that have been going on are way scaled back going forward, uh, because it's just, it's horrible for our country, uh, the situation that we're in. Uh, my fear is that a few weeks from now, we're right back here, and I hope, certainly hope that doesn't happen. I believe that the partisan politics on both sides needs to be eased for the purpose of uniting the public. I think we do have to tone down the rhetoric, but the left is still Do you think that left. goes for both sides? Both sides, yeah, absolutely. Both sides have to tone it down. But will Trump's actions match his supporters' words? The statements and policy positions of those around him give us some clues. His former chief strategist and popular radio host Steve Bannon recently made very clear that vengeance is on his agenda. We're being oppressed by an illegitimate regime yes. that usurped power here, and that's what we have to break. We see McCabe on TV wetting himself every night about, oh, when these people get back in power, they're gonna come after us. You're damn right we're gonna come after you within the rule of law, because that's how we'll bequeath a constitutional republic to our children and grandchildren. I believe Steve Bannon would say that, and I would call it an illegitimate regime because I don't believe the election in 2020 was fair. Steve Bannon is right on top of a lot of the things that happened. He knows that a lot of the people did very evil things while Trump was in office. Kevin Roberts, president of the Heritage Foundation, a major sponsor of the conference and author of a 900-page policy brief called Project 2025, called for a second American Revolution on Bannon's show. Now we are in the process of the second American Revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Should I be alarmed by those kind of statements? Not at all. In fact, uh, President Trump has disavowed Project 2025 and has made it clear that its Agenda 47, which is platform which we approve today, is what he stands by. Trump's former chief strategist Steve Bannon and conference sponsor Heritage Foundation aren't directly involved with the Trump campaign, but his new running mate, J.D. Vance, is no stranger to heated rhetoric either, once telling the American conservative that our people hate the right people. Our people hate the right people. What do you think when you hear that? Was there context to that? Um, he was said when someone followed up to ask him what he meant, his spokespeople said Vance strongly believes that the political, financial, and big tech elites deserve nothing but our scorn and hatred. I can agree with that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you have to be violent or oppress anybody to hate them. I'd say people who are trying to take away your rights, people who are trying to suppress voices, I think it's okay to hate them. But talking about scorn and hatred, that doesn't sound like unity. I mean, that, to be fair, yeah, that does not sound like unity. Vance has also suggested that the right shouldn't necessarily reduce government power, but rather just seize the administrative state for our own purposes and ignore court rulings trying to stop you from doing so. One concern I have as a libertarian, and I wonder what you think about this, is that he's just going to weaponize it in the opposite direction. Is that a concern? I, d I don't think so. Um, because the first time it ran, you know, it's lock up Hillary and all that stuff, and they didn't do it. And he actually said she's been through enough. Uh, so I, I don't think that's going to happen. Certainly don't want that to happen. Yeah. Uh, because again, you know, what, what the thing is you have a pendulum that swings back and forth. Yeah. So it's not using the power of government for 
your benefit. Trump has vowed to overhaul the Department of Justice, and two of his former appointees authored a piece titled The U.S. Justice Department is Not Independent that argues for the president's power to dismiss any DOJ lawyer who doesn't strictly obey the president's demands. Do you think Trump is going to use that power to seek vengeance against his political enemies? No, he's, he said it clear that, that the, uh, the vengeance he has is for success in our country, and I believe him when he says that. What do you think needs to happen to, in this polarized moment, to bring some peace and unity to this country? I think they, we have to stop using our government agencies as weapons against political opponents. I mean, that's what happens in third world countries.